Alright, so as we all know, the Hive Skywars kits update released last week, becoming one of the biggest Skywars updates of all time. Obviously, like the update name suggests, there are kits in this update, of which you can pick from five. In this video, I'm going to be going through all of the kits to try and determine which one is the best. I'll be playing a few games with each, and I'll show how each of them work. Interested? Let's get started. Okay, so I should probably preface this video by saying that the Skywars Kits game mode is still in its very early stages right now. In the week that it's been out, there have already been two updates that have changed how some of the kits work, and I completely expect that to keep happening for at least the next few weeks. Basically what I'm trying to say is that this video may or may not be accurate by the time that you watch it. Just keep that in mind. So, like I said, there are five different kits. Voidwalker, Baller, Builder, Panic, and Trapper. Let's just go ahead and start off with Voidwalker. With the Voidwalker kit, you gain one Ender Pearl every kill that you get, and you also get a second chance, so if you fall into the Void, you get a respawn. Now, just a little bit of preliminary knowledge, literally everyone and their grandma uses this kit, and I feel like its abilities make it pretty obvious why. Literally, if you just walk off the map, Y you get a respawn. No other kit has this, and y you can literally just respawn if you, like, accidentally void or someone hits you off or whatever. It's kind of- it's kind of overpowered. You see, look, I just- I'm not the greatest of the game, but Voidwalker just saved me. I was trying to get a kill and then missed my pearl, but it's fine because Voidwalker, it helps out quite a lot. Obviously, this has led to honestly quite a lot of people saying that the kit is just absolutely broken, but honestly, I don't think so. I feel like it's one of those kits that you have to use your brain to fight against. If you get a Voidwalker into the void, they're going to respawn, and you actually have to think about do I want to hit them into the void, or do I want to try and kill them outright so that they don't get to use their respawn? Like, this guy, I have better gear than him, I think, so I'm gonna try and just actually kill him so that he doesn't get his respawn. There we go, and there we go, I just, uh, you know, I just countered a Voidwalker. You just have to actually kill them. But it's a risk, because sometimes, you know, you have worse gear than them, and it's just better off to save yourself by hitting them into the void. As much as people say it's, like, unbalanced or whatever, I honestly think it's pretty perfectly balanced in that aspect. Okay, so let's say you're, like, fighting someone, and you're just absolutely getting rolled. You just want to reset, get some health back, you can respawn, and you're back to your island. You can just get out of that situation pretty easily, which I think is another just really cool feature, I guess of the Voidwalker kit. I personally don't use it that much just because I like having a little bit more of a challenge and not having that insurance policy in Skywars. Overall, I think the Voidwalker kit is honestly a really solid kit for basically anyone that just like wants an insurance policy in Skywars. If you're someone who falls in the void quite a lot, <coughs> sorry, <we'll be coughs> Voidwalker kit is honestly probably the best kit for you. Moving on though, the next kit that we're gonna try out is called the Baller Kit, and with this kit, you start off with eight snowballs, and every kill that you get, you get four snowballs added to your total. I feel like there's not really too, too much to say about the Baller Kit, if we're being honest. Again, it gives you eight snowballs. You can do your normal snowball stuff, get people into combos this way. You can also knock people off of bridges, and then you can also do the MJ Classic, which involves just spamming a bunch of snowballs and hitting someone into the void. Oh no, I I think the baller kit is a really fun kit. It's personally my favorite kit, just because I like using snowballs. Snowballs are very fun. It definitely takes, I guess, more skill to use than something like the Voidwalker kit, for example. You're gonna see a lot of the higher skilled players, the sweats and stuff like that, using the baller kit just because snowballs are pretty good. I know some people dislike it because they just hate snowballs in general, but I think it's a solid kit to use if you're someone like me or MJ that is, in fact, a snowball enjoyer. Alright, so the next kit is called Builder, and it gives you a Bridge Builder, a Hard Hat, a Diamond Pickaxe, and four cobblestone every 15 seconds. So one of the main things about this kit is that you literally do not have to make your own bridge if you don't want to. You can just 
you can just use the auto bridger and never have to bridge again until you run out of blocks with it. I mean, if you don't like want to have to bridge, then why bridge? Just select the builder kit and you can just literally go anywhere on the map that your heart desires. Also, if for whatever reason you like mining a lot of blocks, you get a diamond pickaxe like I said, and you can mine blocks with it and it mines faster than the regular iron pick, which is cool I guess, but I don't really think it has too much practical use. I guess if you're trying to mine a lot of ores in a short amount of time, the diamond pick will help a little bit. But even if your auto bridger ends up running out, you also still get cobblestone that appears in your inventory every few seconds. And it's basically just a kit that you can use if you enjoy placing blocks quite a lot. Alright, so there's obviously quite a lot of people that say that the builder kit just kind of sucks, it's useless, it's not that great. But one thing that it's pretty underrated for, actually, is being able to rush mid. I know I'm pretty late to the rush already. However, I can get to mid really fast, especially on a diagonal spawn, because I don't have to, like, go to the middle islands. I can literally just go straight from my base directly to mid. I know people that are good at the game will say, well, just Icy Bridge, but you can see what happens when I try an Icy Bridge. Yeah. One more thing that you get with this kit that I mentioned earlier, you get a golden helmet with protection too. It's supposed to be like a, a Bob the Builder type helmet, but I'm pretty sure that a diamond helmet is actually better than it, so if you get one, you're probably better off putting the diamond helmet on, and unfortunately not keeping the drippy golden helmet on. Overall, I think the builder kit, it's underrated, for sure. I know a lot of people don't like it because it's not really a flashy kit, it doesn't have any extremely good abilities, but I feel like it's solid for gameplay and a lot of people don't realize that. Moving on to the fourth kit, we have the panic kit. You get three spells of shielding, which have their own specific use, which I'll show. And when you're at a very low health, you get a temporary speed boost. You get to go fast. All right, so let's say you're like fighting someone or whatever, and you're just getting absolutely rolled. You can't fight them anymore. You just put on one of the spells of shielding. And as you can see in my little icon, I had a little thing around me and they couldn't hit me. We'll do it again. Dude can't hit me once again, and now he's out because I'm being very annoying to him. However, let's say I, I want to try and hit this guy while I have the shield on. You can't hit them either. The shield works both ways. You can't hit people, they can't hit you. Also, if you get low, again, you get the, the speed boost, which is pretty cool. You can run away. The panic kit is definitely a kit that I feel like quite a lot of people will find quite annoying. I mean, again, you're like fighting someone, and if you want to get out of that fight or just not fight anymore, you can. I feel like the panic kit is just one of those other kits that you can use if you want to play a little bit safe. Kind of similar to the Void Walker. You've got options to get out, you've got options to reset if you want to, if you're just absolutely getting destroyed. And a lot of people absolutely hate this kit for that reason. Again, like I said, it's pretty annoying to fight against, but there are other kits that are pretty useful as well that can be used to counter it. The final kit, however, is called the Trapper Kit. Probably somewhat sort of made for all of the wannabe evidence out there. You get a diamond pickaxe with this kit, you get a shovel, specifically a gold shovel, and you get a spell of invisibility that regenerates every 20 seconds after you use it. And you also have a 1 in 5 chance to reflect damage back to your attacker if they hit you. So again, we've got the diamond and pick back in business, which helps a little bit just by being able to mine stuff faster in certain blocks. You can mine quite fast, which can be used for traps and stuff. You've also got the shovel in spaced out letters, and you can mine blocks mineable by a shovel pretty quickly. However, the shovel is also gold, and so if you mine enough blocks, specifically like 30 something, I believe, it'll break. So again, the big thing with this kit is you can go invisible and then just hit people off the map because they have no idea where you are which I think is quite cool. Again, if you use this book, it makes you completely invisible. There are like a couple of ground particles that show when you're walking, but otherwise, people literally cannot see you. And one more thing to note is that when you use the invis book, it actually takes off your armor. You can see that my armor bars aren't there when I'm invisible. So if people actually get some hits on off on you while you're invis, it will not be a good time for you. The thing about the trapper kit is that it's so obvious when you're trapping because you have the gigantic trapper title above your head. Oh wow, would you look at that, a guy about to walk across my bridge, no way, I used my invisibility and my shovel, and was just able to kill him easily like that. All in all, I think the trapper kit is more of a meme kit than anything. Realistically, you're not gonna really get too much value out of the stuff that it has to offer. I guess you get the pick, which is useful, the invis book can be fun, but if you're actually fighting against good players, you're probably not gonna find that much use out of the trapper kit. 
I enjoy using the kit, though. I will say it is, again, a very, very fun kit. But it's not going to be a very popular kit just because, again, it doesn't really help you win games unless you're someone like Evident that can actually get value out of it. Okay, so I think the best way to figure out what the best kit is is just to rank all of them. I'm literally just going to go from worst to best here and show you what I think is the best and worst, but you're also free to have whatever opinion you want to have. I think the worst kit in terms of value that you can actually get out of it is probably the Trapper kit. Like I said, it's a fun kit, but you're not really gonna see too many people actually like maining this and winning a lot of games with it. I'd say in fourth place, it's probably the builder kit. While you've got a lot of value out of the rushing potential and the pickaxe, again, it's not one of those kits that you're really gonna see that many people maining just because there are kits that are better than it. In third place, I'd probably say the baller. And while it's my personal favorite kit, I enjoy using the baller kit a lot, it really doesn't give you all that much. You literally just get snowballs and replenishing snowballs, and that's all you get. Again, you could get those in the game if you're mining enough gold or just lucky enough to find a bunch of snowballs. The fact that you do have snowballs does make the kit pretty good, and I think there is a lot of value there, just not enough as compared to the top two, of which second place is the panic kit. Panic, I don't think many people would actually rate this high. It gives you three shields that you can use to run away and get out of sticky situations, and again, it gives you that speed boost when you're low, and I think that's super, super valuable for if you're trying to win fights and stuff. However, I feel like everyone's obvious choice for the best kit is going to be the Voidwalker kit. Voidwalker is just too good. I think in a game like Sky Wars, where one of the main things is that there's a void and that you can't really respawn, the fact that Voidwalker gives you a respawn is what makes this the best kit by far. You can either use it to jump off and reset if you need to, or just have that lifeline for if you make a mistake, and I think that's what makes Voidwalker the best kit in Hive Sky Wars. Regardless, I am really happy with this Hive Sky Wars kit's update, and I think it's going to bring quite a lot of versatility to the game in the future. But if you want to see more information on another recent update to the Hive called the Replay Mode Update, I recommend you go and watch my video on that, which just showed up on screen. Either way, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.